Let's go on to another Friday nighter. This will be the Texas Tech Red Raiders at the Texas Longhorns. They're number seven. They're about a two touchdown favorite or so. This will be Friday, 730 Eastern time on ABC. Now, Texas has not clinched a spot in the Big 12 title game just yet. I must be completely honest. I thought they did, <laughs> but, but they have not. There is one scenario in which the Longhorns would not be playing on championship Saturday. That would mean they'd lose to Texas Tech. Oklahoma would beat TCU. Oklahoma State would beat BYU. And Kansas State would lose to Iowa State. In that scenario, they would not be in the Big 12 title game. So it's possible, but looking at analytics, it's like a 4% chance. So (laughs) if you feel good about putting the money on a parlay like that, go for it, my friend, but I am not going to indulge. A couple things about this matchup. This is one that kind of has been talked about for a while, dating back to August. And if you guys remember, and you guys listened to some of our summer podcasts, this was a big topic of conversation with Brett Yormark, the big 12 commissioner. He was attending a red Raider club kickoff luncheon and they were sitting up there with Joey McGuire and and basically people were asking your mark about about Joey McGuire and hey are you going to be able to you know play Texas or whatever and he told Joey McGuire to quote take care of business against the Longhorns of course the Longhorns leaving the Big 12 this will be their final Big 12 regular season game so your mark in the Big 12 office I thought it was just in fun I I thought it was an interesting you know here we are it's a game we talked about in August and here we are sitting final week of the regular season bringing up a funny story from back in the day. But a couple of things in this one, what will decide the outcome? Can Texas Tech run the football? That's the big question. Because a lot of people are not familiar with Taj Brooks. And he is a workhorse for the Red Raiders. An awesome back. Really, really good. I have been thoroughly impressed with what I've seen from him. He has 249 carries. That's second most in the FBS this year. And in the last three games, Manor, Texas, that's where he's from, by the way, he's rushed for 461 yards and three touchdowns in the last three games. So that's an average about a buck 54 over the last three. And they've had a three game winning streak as a result of his brilliance. Uh, now, most of the damage that Texas Tech has created, if you watch them, a lot of it's really downhill. They're really a between the tackles run team. And looking at some of the percentages, about 72% of their rushing yardage is between the tackles. It's a pretty good stat. And one that I think is very important in this game. And just so you know, they are fifth in college football as far as the percentage of the rushing yardage that comes between the tackles. So that's a really high number. A lot of teams do it outside the tackles. A lot of teams do it on scramble drills. No, there's right between the tackles. You know what's coming. And the problem with that type of approach is that you're playing against the Texas defensive tackles that don't give up anything on the ground. Iowa State last week rushed for nine yards. They are fifth in college football against the run, about 83 yards a game given up. And they're one of just just nine teams in the country that are averaging less than three yards per carry. So Byron Murphy, Tavondre Sweat, uh, they are really big. They are really physical. And they are a massive problem for every single team that's trying to run the ball downhill. They completely took over the game last week. I would think that's going to be a real possibility again this year. But if you're going to move the ball against Texas, it's not going to be on the ground. So far, Texas this season has given up 3,703 yards of offense. Seems like a lot, but over the course of an 11-game season, it's really not that many. The problem is 75% of those yards have come through the air. That is 130th as far as percentages in college football. So it's skewed. They're great against the run. Don't give up hardly anything on the ground. Just 25% of the offense production against them this year is on the ground. 75, however, through the air, and that's 130th. An important stat when taking that into account, which means Taj is going to be important at running back but it's really going to shift to more Xavier White, who's number 14. He averages a lot of big plays, about nine yards after catch per reception. He's a big play threat and can be a big problem for him. Another guy that you need to be keeping an eye on for Texas Tech is Miles Price. He's been a little banged up lately, but they remain hopeful at this point that he'll be able to go. He is excellent after the catch. Not as much down the field. Xavier White's your guy down the field. 
when Miles Price is your guy, you kind of get him on screens, you get him, and he takes off with it, and he's a, he's really difficult to bring down in the open field. Another injury I just mentioned what Miles Price is dealing with. Texas Tech is also potentially going to be without their linebacker Steve Linton, who's one of their better defenders, and he's missed the last three games. Will he be back? It'd be big to get his presence back at linebacker. He's had a couple of big forced fumbles against Baylor, and he would just be a really important piece to kind of add, knowing what Texas can attack you with and how they can attack you. But the big question for Texas, and it remains this and has been this for, gosh, as long as I can remember, Texas has got to be able to finish drives. And if not in this game, then the next game, and if they get in the playoff, they have to be able to finish drives. Because right now they have 42 red zone penetrations this year, just 19 red zone touchdowns. 45% or so touchdown rate. That's 127 in the FBS. The good news is they're great on third down. And on so much of college football now is determined on third down and red zone. So are you scoring touchdowns in the red zone? If yes, you're probably doing pretty good. If you're getting off the field on third down, you're probably doing pretty well. Well, you're not scoring touchdowns on offense, but they are getting off the field on third down. They're giving up just 26.6% conversions on third down. That's number one in the FBS. And then one of the teams that we've talked about this season, Texas Tech was one of the teams we liked a lot coming into the year. And they have been one of the biggest underachievers uh, so far this season. It's disappointing. I'm not going to lie. I had them in my top 25 in the preseason. And usually when you look at teams that have underachieved greatly, it's either because of a couple things. One, injuries. If you have injuries, it's going to be tough to potentially overcome. But they've lost Tyler Shuck. They've lost a couple other guys. But injuries aren't really the real reason why Texas Tech has underachieved this year. They've underachieved because they're turnovers. They are turning the ball over. At least they have quite a bit this year. They're minus six in the turnover margin. 12 of the 18 turnovers they've had this year came against BYU, Oregon, and Kansas State. They've only forced 12. So that's 105th. So they are not doing a great job as far as turning people over. And they also have done a great job in some of their bigger games where they have actually turned it over quite a bit themselves. So a couple trends, Texas and Texas Tech games have gone under the total in five straight games, and four of the last five Texas home games have gone under the total. I think Texas handles their business. I think it's a bad matchup for Texas Tech. They got them last year. They surprised them last year in Lubbock. I don't think that's going to be the case this year. I think Texas handles their business and rolls there on Friday night. 